I remember as a kid, there were different levels of guarantees. You know, there was, I will, I promise, I swear, and then you throw in pinkies and spit, and it was all really complicated. Well, James says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Why? What's wrong with swearing an oath? Hey, this is Looking Intently. I'm going through the book of James, so if there's any videos you want to catch up on, click the tag in the upper right. And then to subscribe, click that subscribe button and then that bell icon in the lower right. And if you like the video, please uh, click the thumbs up, leave a comment, share it, uh, click the share button, share it on Facebook or somewhere. That is super helpful. In chapter 5, verse 12, James writes, But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Well, first of all, realize the swearing he's talking about here is not cussing or cursing. It's to, to add an oath. You know, I swear I'll do it uh, on my mother's grave. Uh, that's what he says not to do. <laughs> Notice he says, above all. Now, did that strike you? Was that like a wait a minute moment? Like, Wait, James, you've been talking about some pretty important stuff. Uh, you've been talking about this idea of, you know, not judging people, of, uh, you know, true humility, of, uh, you know, the rich people defrauding the poor, oppressing them, and how serious that is, and, you know, true patience, that humble contentment, all these things. And then he gets to, to swearing, you know, adding I swear to something, and he says, this is above all. And he goes further. Look how he ends this. He says, that you may not fall under condemnation. This is serious. <laughs> so what does he mean exactly and why? Well, James often refers back to something in the Sermon on the Mount, and he's definitely doing it here. There's a parallel passage in Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus says in verse 33 and following, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but you shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. In other words, if you say, I swear, well, then you definitely have to do that. You <laughs> need to follow through. But Jesus, in verse 34, he says, But I say to you, do not take an oath at all. In other words, don't add that. And certainly there's that, this initial element of you shouldn't have to add, I swear, to be serious about it. You know, I swear I'll do it, and if I don't say I swear, then I, eh, it's not really binding on me to do it. Or I swear I'm telling the truth. If I don't add that, then I may be lying. No, he says, do not take an oath at all. But then he goes deeper. And this is what's really the foundation of what's happening here. Verse 34 again, he says, But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Apparently, these were things they would invoke. You know, again, like people today, I swear on my mother's grave or something. Uh, I've never said that, but I, I hear it <laughs> or have heard it maybe in the movies. Well, apparently in Jesus' day, they would swear by heaven or earth or Jerusalem. He's saying, you have no right to do that. <laughs> Those aren't yours. You have no authority over heaven, over earth, over Jerusalem. Only God does. And then he goes on to say, do not take an oath, verse 36, do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Again, apparently some form of an oath they would take. And he says, no, you can't control making your hair white or black, so don't invoke that kind of oath. He says, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Again, it's evil. That's how serious this is. And not because you just add that little phrase, I swear, but because of what we just saw. The, the way that they would swear that, the, the things they would base their oaths on, showed a lack of humility. You know, you have no authority over heaven, earth, or Jerusalem. You have no control over what happens to the hairs of your head. Don't do something that implies you have that control, that authority. Don't act in a way that isn't humble. We keep seeing that over and over, don't we? And so ask yourself, is there anything I do that expresses a lack of humility? Maybe this specifically, I swear some kind of oath, maybe something else. And, and I tell you what, this one takes a true examination of self because it's so easy to not even realize it. You know, that's what we saw back in that passage where he said, you know, don't say you're going to go to such and such a city, set up for a year and make money. You know, on first glance, it's like, why? I mean, a plan. you got to have a plan, right? But it was just the nature of that, that lack of humility. You don't even realize at first. 
So this takes true examination of self and, and that requires you know, the elements of the growth triangle. You get together with a trusted Christian friend and you ask them for their input, their perspective. You look at situations in life and see, all right, how does that perhaps show a lack of humility? And then the foundation for it is the Word of God. And that means we've got to read the good book like a good book.